a man doeth this without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. What? Question mark. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? You don't belong to yourself anymore, okay? You're a bought with Christ, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Uh, Revelation, I mean, uh, Ephesians. I believe it's Ephesians where God deals with the temptation. But now, let me, let me just say, this is something that caught my attention. <coughs> Moses, Moses, uh, Moses had a call, but, but in Ephesians chapter four, and and here's what Moses was uh, fixing to go uh, obey God, and he came up one day and is uh, the just, God just said, I tell you what, go go to Exodus four. Let me just show you this. Exodus 4. This, this is a very, you might say a very strange thing, but Exodus 4 uh, and verse 24. Now here, here's Moses, and he, he, Moses has married a wife, and her name is Zipporah. Now, you, you all know that Moses married an Ethiopian. Didn't say she was black, but he said she was an Ethiopian. Yeah. Okay. And uh, his 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 brother and sister got mad about it, and she got leprosy over it. And uh, God healed her. That that was one of the things that happened. And then verse twenty four, it came to pass by the way in the end that the Lord met him, met Moses. And sought to bless him. What is that? Kill him. Kill him. Right. Now, now, folks, I know, I know. We think, well, you know, I don't. I just don't believe God meant that. I don't believe that God meant that he was going. To... Okay. All right. Well, I, I mean, it said he did. Then Zipporah took a sharp knife and cut off the foreskin of her son and cast it at his feet and said, "Surely a bloody husband thou art to me." So he let him go. Then she said, A bloody husband thou art because of the circumcision. Now here, you know why God was going to kill him? Because he had not obeyed him. Moses knew that the covenant that he had with God was circumcision. The Jews did. All of the Jews were circumcised. And, and he had not circumcised his son. Okay? So God says, you disobey me, and if I'm going to use you, there's things in your life that God says you need to deal with. Now, you can skirt it, you can not do it, but rest assured, God can't use you, Moses, if you don't do what I told you to do. Now, there had to be a controversy between him and his wife, because she, when, she, when she circumcised him, you notice what she said. You are a bloody man. She wasn't used to this. She was an Ethiopian. They didn't circumcise. Because she was an Ethiopian. She wasn't a Jew that we know of. And so the anger that she had, and they must have been fighting over it, and finally God said, I'm going to tell you something. When I tell you to do something, you do it. And you haven't done it, and I'm not can't use you if you if you're going to be hindered from doing my work. Matter of fact, I'm going to take you out. Now, did you know later on 
God did take Moses out? Or did he take him out for? Disobeyed. He, again, he, <clears throat> he disobeyed him. He said, uh, he said, uh, I, he got, but what happened was he got mad at the people. And he said, uh, they wanted water. And he said, I'll tell you one thing, I'll get you some water. He didn't got mad at them. I'll get you some water. You want some water? We'll get you some water. Now, wait a minute, Moses, you don't get the water out of the rock. God does. So he tried to take the glory. He tried to say, I'm the one that did this. I, I can do this. I've got to be a big shot. I can tell you uh, this is how it'll happen. And God said, wait a minute, Moses, you knew better than that. Now you get your stuff together, I'm going to take you home. And he did. Now, why do you think God did that? That's pretty strong. Yeah. Because the law, Moses represented the law. The law will not get you into heaven. For by the deeds of the law shall no flesh be justified. It, it absolutely, 100% takes the grace of God. You believe it in Jesus. And he requires that, you, that he be first place in your life, in my life. Now he works on that continually, right? How, how many times has God warned you and told you to do something and you didn't want to do it and you did sin and you rebelled against God, but yet because you're a child of God and the Holy Spirit lives inside of you, you know right from wrong and therefore you just had to say, Lord, you're right, I'm sorry. And it, say, here's what God would do lots of times. He will bring a revelation of himself in your life and show you what a sinner you really are. And you know what's missing in the church today? It's conviction. And God is not feared anymore, hardly ever. We, we go, and the preachers are preaching prosperity. This is how you can be a millionaire. This is how you can live in one big mansion like I do. You can fly around in jet planes and you can take all this money and you can be, and God, listen, Jesus, here's what Jesus said. Now, don't you listen to what Jesus said. Blessed are you poor. He didn't say rich. You go beyond in Africa and tell people they're supposed to be rich. And we ask about rich. <laughs> rich? I mean, I, I'm, I'm living off of uh, what? How did them people even live over there? You know? And you go over and talk prosperity. Now, there's a difference between God's prosperity and what preachers are preaching today. And let me tell you something, folks. God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. It is faith. Now, if God blesses you, you remember who gave it to you, right? And if we, uh, if we don't want to give to God, I've made this statement a lot of times. You have people. You don't want to give? You, you say, well, I, I just don't feel like that. You say, no, I didn't say that, preacher. I, I didn't say it. That I didn't want to. Well, okay, God says, I'm looking at your heart. Is, what, what do you want to do? Had you rather have sin? And here's, what, here's what's going to happen one day. God's going to bring it all together. How many of you know what happened with the angels in heaven? One third of them. You know what one third of them did? Who'd they follow? The devil. The devil. Yeah. Now, how, you tell me how the devil got a third of them to follow him. I don't know, but I, I praise God that God was able to save us. One third of the angels followed the devil. I mean, they were living in a, in heaven. Yeah. That's what scares me. I said, Lord, I'm going to tell you one thing. I don't want to not serve you. And there's going to be times you're going to have to say, okay, Lord, I'm I, I, I failed, and I, I, and I, but I, I listen, I don't want this world. If you love this world, you don't love God. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not, not in you. It. It's not. Because Jesus came to die. And you know what? When you ask somebody today, 
and, and being honest. You want to follow Jesus? And Jesus says, come on. Well, how did you know he, he knew to go to Peter and Andrew? All them boys. He went right to them and said, uh, come, come on, come on, follow me. They left their nets. Say, you mean God might ask me to? Yeah, uh -huh. He might want you to go overseas. He might want you to go to Africa. He might want you to go to uh, Australia. He might want you to go to your next door neighbor. He might want you to pray for somebody that's lost and doesn't know the Lord. And God has a call on everybody in your life. And everything you do for God will be blessed. Now, we're, 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 uh, we're, uh, what do you call it? We're a, something at work. God's working on us all the time. Don't condemn yourself, but I'm going to tell you, if God shows you this week just how low down you really are, it'll be okay. God will forgive you. And I thought, Lord, how many things in my life have I done as a Christian? I'm not talking about as a false person. I'm saying as a Christian that I wish I had never done, I wish I had never thought, um, and this world is tempting us all the time. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. We don't serve God because we have to. We serve God because we love him. And you know why we love him? Because he first, first loved, us. loved us. That's the only reason. And thank God for his grace. So my prayer is that God would really reveal to us what a sinner we really are in need of a Savior. See, that's why people don't get saved today. They don't mind raising their hand, saying, you know, yeah, I'll, I'll serve Jesus, I guess. I don't want to embarrass you. Embarrass you? You want to go to heaven or you want to go to hell? He said, I don't mind. I don't mind doing whatever God wants me to do. That's what the rich young ruler said. Huh? I'm not going to do that. Just be honest. When he saved you, wasn't it a wonderful thing to know his love? And we drift, sometimes we drift. And God says, you come back to where you are, where you need to be, and let me help you. And so, aren't you glad for God's grace? Amen. If we confess our sin, Well, Lord, mine's not as bad as Terry, bro. Uh, he didn't say that, did he? No. He said if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just, and just to forgive us, now listen, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Boy, I'm so glad that's in the hour of Now, how many people are going to die and go to hell and Lord, how in the world you love us up there? I tell you what, it's just through the blood. That's all I can say. It's yeah. not because we're good. It's because you are. He can get you home. When you trust him, he'll get you home. He'll take care of you. And we want everybody to go with us that will. You can't make people go to heaven. No. You just can't do it. You can pray for them. You can shed tears over them. But it's like that man that was one day they couldn't get to Jesus. He was sick. You know what they did? They did the craziest thing. Let him through the roof. <laughs> they look up and they had him in there and they had him preaching. All of a sudden, what in the world is going on up there? They turned the roof off this place. And they let this man down. Four of them. Now, you know what their names were? I don't know, but you can name them Old Faith and Grace and all of them got together and said, let me get this man to Jesus. And Jesus forgave him and healed him. You know what we're called to do? Same thing. Get them to Jesus. Yeah. We can get them to Jesus. And Jesus will save them. So let's do that. Let's pray together. Now, Father, we thank you for your grace every day and we pray for our eyes to be open, Lord, and uh, walk in forgiveness and 
uh, help us, Lord. We need your strength. We need you uh, to take care of us because we can't. Without you, we're nothing. Totally nothing. Thank you for being with us and reveal to us your will and help us to walk in it. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for our people. I pray your encouragement in their life now. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Pray you have a good week this week. Black eyed peas and peas. Black eyed peas.